And Burks misses one. Oh my! He's God. automatic fifty percent. His campaign. Oh, Gabe man. Johnson for the win. Oh no! And he makes it. Yeah, and he makes what? it. <laughs> and he makes it. <laughs> you knew. You knew that was gonna happen. You oh, knew that was gonna happen. Man, that Yo. was one for the tank. That was one for the tank, man. A barn burner in the Valley of the Sun. Knicks visiting the Phoenix Suns, the second of a seven game road trip. And uh, against a shorthanded Suns team, man. No Chris Paul, no Devin Booker. Knicks and Suns were battling it out all night. Several lead changes, several ties. Julius had it cooking early, gets himself ejected. And as Tibbs' rotations have you scratching your head once again, the Knicks still had a chance to win this game. But free throws, free throws, free throws, the story of our season. Because as Alec Burks misses his second attempt, Cam Johnson, who was on fire all night, makes the Knicks pay as he hits a buzzer beater three to send the Knicks home packing. 115, 114. Knicks lose a heartbreaker in Phoenix. You know, look, the Suns team, best home record in the league, despite mm. not having CP3 and Devin Booker, uh, you know, the campaign can run the team. He's very capable of running that off, especially against a Nick team that's one of the worst defenses in the league. And he showed. It showed tonight. Because this Suns team, one thing they do well, they're number five in the league in assists per game. They move the ball on you. They make you pay. They run several off-ball actions. Their ball movement is constant. And on the flip side for the Knicks, you know, Julie set the tone for him. But his antics, the mental mistakes, cost him in the third quarter as the Knicks were mounting a sizable lead. Knicks scored 38 points in the third. 38 points in the third. They had a double-digit lead once again. Julius gets himself tossed. But nevertheless, the kids had it still going quickly. Yep. RJ, even though he had a hard night shooting, was still getting to the line. Cam, Fournier stepped up in the third. Burke stepped up in the third. The Knicks were still going. But in the fourth, as Cam is cooking... Your better two-way player is going, Tibbs, and then you take him out, going back to your starters. And he went to that when you needed defense, you needed scoring, you needed to get easy buckets when you had no point. Cam Reddish should have finished the game, not just in an offense-defense situation with less than a minute left. He had enough to finish the entire fourth. Big mistake by Tibbs if you want to win the game. Big mistake. And I think that was one of the one of the biggest mistakes that ended up costing us this, this game. Man. You know, when you're Tom Thibodeau, and this is where you put blame on him, you're supposed to know your roster inside and out, even the guys that you get through the season. And you have to, you, you're watching the game, right? You're watching to see what everyone's doing, how they're making their own the contributions to the team while they're on the court. I don't know how you don't recognize Cam is bending the defense, getting to the rim with ease, just having everybody collapse, opening it up for everyone else. And is finishing pretty easily. And then his defense, sure, he's taking gambles where you don't probably want him to take gambles. But I'd rather have him taking gambles than Evan Fournier, who's a turnstile on defense, who's allowing everybody to get by him. Like, we, we legit saw himself set himself up to get screened and walled off for a campaign uh, to just walk in freely to get a layup. This is the stuff that you got to put on Tibbs for. You don't know your players. You don't know what rotations you should go to. And instead you put out Evan Fournier. Yes, he had a good third quarter, but you know, he's mostly offense and not defense. This team's offense. If he's been watching this entire season is so inconsistent. You don't know when it's going to come back. And if you're going to rely on RJ, who's been struggling tonight, six for 26 from the field, he's trying to get into, he's trying to bend the defense. He can't, he's not finishing any, most of his layups. He's not hitting his shots from the perimeter. He's not getting a mid range. 
So why not leave a guy who's making it easy for himself and just adds another layer, another dimension yeah. to that offense? This is where you start to see Tibbs' shortcomings as a head coach when he doesn't really understand offense. How do you take out a guy who's young, athletic, who's able to cover and defend more positions than Fournier? Right. Like Cam, Cam has and a long wingspan. getting to the basket with ease, bro, when your offense is struggling. Getting to the basket with ease. But if RJ's not having it, then you see that it automatically goes back to Julius. And he was having tonight. No, 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 no shade to Julius. He was having it tonight. He was efficient. Nine for nine for 18, was hitting his shots. Uh, 100% from the free throw line, six for six. Like he was doing his thing, but you got to keep your calm. Like you're a yeah. veteran. You're, you're a veteran at this point. Like you're if you're trying to win, you got to know that you're playing like stop, stop jawing at the mouth. Just focus on your game. Don't, let, let your game do the talking for you. Like that is like the, the most coined phrase throughout all of sports. Let your game do the talking for you. But that's what happens. They know that you can get Julius like out of it by just talking to him, getting him all, get him all on edge. And then you get him completely out of his game. And then he starts forcing the issue or then he just blows off. And for tonight, you know, he gets ejected mm -hmm. first time this season, but like, why are you doing? Like, why? Why does it matter? And even when you're watching like the the the, the replay, you see Cam like putting his hands on his back and and get, getting a little physical with him. Like, that's the game. He's like, a, come he's, on, he's that, a was, head it, case, was anything, it was anything egregious. He, he's a head case. You got to be smarter than that. He was playing well. Um, you know, I hate that the league has gotten this off, but they claim that he was ejected for contact. With the official, and those are the rules. Rules are the rules. Uh, you got to get your head in the game. We've been talking about this ad nauseum since last year about his mental toughness in these situations. And, you know, it cost us because this was a night where, yes, after he left, the offense was flowing a little bit, but we still needed more. We still needed a little bit more, even though we did score 114 points. Um, you got you to keep your head in the game. We traded Cam Reddish for a protected 18th round pick. You know, I don't, I don't want to hear we trade him for Kevin Knox because, like you said, Kevin Knox is not an NBA player no more. So we literally just traded him for the pick. So is mm -hmm. Cam Reddish worth mm -hmm. a protected 18th this year, 14th next year? Mm -hmm. Of course, right? So we, we got to start in caliber three, in my opinion. Am I wrong? Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think if we yeah. give him the minutes, he, he's going to get that. No question. So I think – we're thinking about this all wrong. Like I know I was I was about I was on the bandwagon. Play the kids, play the kids. Mm -hmm. We played the kids today. We played Deuce. Deuce was getting looked off the entire game. Mm -hmm. Like who? Like that's not on Tibbs. His teammates don't even trust him. You know what I mean? They look at him at, at like, like he's a like a G League player. So you know that that's on the team. So what I think we need to do is, is part of asset management. We need to consolidate it, right? So mm -hmm. keep losing. Tank Commander Tibbs. We get Ivy, you know, top two pick. We straight at the one. RG's at the two. Cam's at the three. We got Julius at the four. People can say what they want about him. That is what it is. And Mitch is a problem. I don't care what anyone says. He well, ate DeAndre yeah. Ayton. He ate him today. He did. DeAndre Ayton had eight points, four rebounds. He did. He eight did. points, four rebounds. First number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton, wasn't doing nothing. Why? Because CPT wasn't playing. So I'm tired of hearing that, like, like Mitch is not, Mitch is doing this without a point guard. Imagine if you had one. He's absolutely worth all the money he's going to get in the off season. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, our starting five, if we can get that guard, if we can get Ivy, we are set. So then we need to consolidate the bench, right? I'm not, you know, IQ, Grimes, all of them. You know what I'm saying? Especially Obi. I, I agree. I think I think Obi needs to go out before he turns into Knox. Like. How much? How much? How much is he gonna be worth? Like after next season, playing behind Julius, we gotta get rid of him. We gotta get rid of him. It's something personal, but you just gotta get. You gotta get something for him. Package him with Grimes. Like I don't even care at this point. Like we just need to consolidate it because like it's gonna be hard to move off of some of the best yeah. contracts. But I think the starting five is actually okay if we can get something at that one spot and a new coach. But I'm like Mitch needs to get paid. Like if we lose Mitch. This is going to be yeah. a whole other issue next season, and I'm not trying to watch the Knicks not Mitch. Mitch saved us tonight, and we still lost. 
it is it, it's it's to a certain degree that it's it might just be cp honestly there's too many cooks in the kitchen for us like every year come draft time it's just too many people in our organization that have too many different opinions like they're not on the same path they wasn't on the same path with frank they wasn't on the same path with knox they wasn't even on the same path with obi <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like and and to to be fair to obi Yes, Obi needs a point guard because he is a pick and roll big. But it's like, I thought when they drafted Obi, they was gonna do that scary Terry trade with Randall. Mm-hmm. And now that 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 ship is sailed. I, sure. As far as this game, like I'm gonna get back to what I called for, and then I'm gonna hang up. As far as this game mm-hmm. goes, this game is the perfect example. And I don't care what nobody says. I, this is just how I feel. Mm-hmm. The tank is is moving, but the tank is steady moving. But Randall and Tibbs are the biggest problems of this team. It's just. It's point blank, period. T- Tibbs, he doesn't even realize that the game is changing. Like the game, the get the fourth quarter where Randall did what he did, mind you, it wasn't even something that he should have done because that's just a, a, a play on. And it, and what everybody's saying is that Cam pushed him. If you look back at the replay, Randall pushed him, which got Cam upset and pushed him. And because Randall's just 250 and a, and a bulldozer, he didn't even feel it. But he felt it turn around and made it a, a big deal. But mm-hmm. My whole thing with those two men is that they they don't they don't Randall's IQ it, it's just not there. Is I I saw it for a whole season for for two and a half seasons I seen that this guy has no basketball IQ and when he's not ball dominating he doesn't help you win. As far as Tibbs, Tibbs could watch a whole a whole game change and he won't do anything about it. There was no plays called for McBride for Reddish. Even when he's letting RJ just be RJ, it's just RJ's getting going downhill on on, on a pick and roll. You yeah. don't got him coming off of a curl like Mikel Bridges going downhill, getting easy layups. You got him working hard. It's just like I, I just feel like, man, they need a point guard. I don't care what it takes. This year, this summer, any like the only four people that I want on this team that should stay no matter what is one, Mitch, pay that man. He, he worked for every dollar bill. Mm-hmm. Keep him. RJ, because RJ's the, the highest pick that we had, and he shows you signs. And then after those, uh, Grimes as a rotational piece. Definitely. And Definitely. then, and then honestly, Cam Reddish, just because I think Cam Reddish is the most talented. But everybody else, in my opinion, is up for grabs, bro. I, there's nothing that I really love sure. about Quickly. There's nothing that I really love about McBride. And Obi needs a point guard, but yeah. he can't. He can't affect the game. Like it, go after Jaden Ivy or Brunson, no matter what. And okay. if that means trading up in a draft, you got to do it, man. Ivy Brunson, no matter what, I'm out. Peace and love. <laughs>